Hi, welcome to Grove Knits. Uh, my name's Rebecca. Those of you who have continued to your subscription, I used to uh, just focus on planning and inks and fountain pens. I still am a planner, but I also have always been a knitter and playing around with different fiber arts. So that's actually the direction that I'm mostly focusing on at the moment, but there will still be the occasional, I'm still tracking a lot of my projects in my Midori planner, my, sorry, Midori Traveler's Notebook. So you will see that come into action as well. So for those of you who are new to my channel, thank you very much for joining me. And for those of you returning, welcome back and thank you for giving me your time. So now let's get on with it. So what I thought I would start with is some of my finished objects. We're, I live in, in um, Victoria, Australia and we're in winter at the moment. Um, today it's particularly sunny as you can tell just by the light in the room, I'm just in natural light. Um, but it is cold, it's between I think 12 and 15 degrees Celsius outside. So that's why I'm actually in a, a sweater. This is actually my Andrea Maori's So Faded, although I've called mine Not So Faded because I've just used, um, it's the hand dyed Dragonfly, Dragonfly Fibers Metamorphosis uh, fingering weight single ply. And this is in the Pixie. Yeah, this is Pixie, the Pixie colorway. So this was actually really nice to knit with. Um, it is actually pilling. I've got to actually get my gleaner out and glean it. It's pilling a bit more than I was hoping that it would. But that just shows that a sweater is well loved, I suppose, and that I'm wearing it a lot. Okay. So now to look at some of the beanies that I've actually been knitting. Um, at the moment, I'm mostly knitting on beanies. I've always got socks with me in my handbag, so I'll have a look at some of the socks. Right this moment, I don't have a sweater on the needles, but I'm hoping to actually cast one on today, hopefully. Um, my daughter wants a sweater and she and her husband are moving to the other side of Australia in the next month over to WA. So I want to actually get her some so that she can take them with her. Um, and I've also... I'll find it, it's around here somewhere. I've been knitting um, some dog coats. Uh, she happens to have a little miniature dash hound, so I'm knitting some dog coats for Cheddar, which is the dog. But beanies. All right, so I've just been knitting my own basic beanie. It's just a vanilla beanie pattern um, and just making some modifications to it. So I tend to knit either a two inch brim beanie with the intention of just wearing it uh, straight um, or I need a four inch beanie, which I've actually got a four inch beanie on the needles at the moment. So that's actually at four inches now. So I'm about to change out to the next size up needles and do the hat and then the crown. Uh, so this one is in a Bendigo Woolen Mills. It's actually a, a Merino uh, superwash in a 10 ply, which is a worsted weight. Um, and this is actually for a family member who's not been well. So the reason for the four inch beanie is so that when he's wearing it, he can actually fold it up and have that extra warmth around the face and the ears. Um, but I say for me personally, I tend to mostly do the two inch brims, but you can then actually just wear as a straight beanie and wear it straight down rather than folding them up. Okay, so this beanie that's finished. So that's also in a Bendigo Woolen Mills tweed yarn. That's coming up pretty, uh, a, bit, a little bit lighter than its actual colour. It's a little bit more of a darker green blue with all those nice tweed flecks through it. So that's just in a eight ply, which is a DK weight uh, merino yarn. Um, and I actually think that the fleck is actually just an acrylic fleck. Okay. Um, most of my yarn is Bendigo Woolen Mills yarns, ex except for the stuff that I buy in the specialist gains, uh, because it's actually my local yarn shop. So this is another basic beanie, just in a nice light grey. This is done in a an adult small or a um, teenager medium, I suppose, child told child large, and it has, as you can see, just a basic Norwegian star pattern. I was actually quite pleased with my colour work on this one because my floats are 
wonderfully spaced so I'm actually quite pleased with my floats in this one it's nice when you can feel good about the inside of it too obviously um, one of the issues with a color work beanie particularly is the the stretch so while this does fit me um, you can see it's actually quite a fitted beanie but so it'll be good either a child's large or a teen or an adult small so fix my hair up again now then this hat here my husband um, particularly likes uh, possum yarn so there's a local specialty yarn store near us that I can get um, the possum yarn from I think it's about 10 or 15 percent possum and then merino so the olive green is that type of yarn and the black is 100 percent merino so I've held two strands of hmm I think it's actually meant to be DK weight so it's two strands of DK weight so eight ply together um, but this hat then came out a little bit too large because what I hadn't realized before knitting with possum is that possum is as drapey as alpaca rather than purely because I'm a little bit lazy and just couldn't be bothered rather than um, ripping the hat out and re-knitting it I just decided to steak it because I've been wanting to play around with steaking so I just grabbed the sewing machine out instead, turned it inside out, and actually just stitched up one of the sides on this one, which is actually this side here, and then just cut it off. Um, I wouldn't do that if it was gifting it to anyone else, but obviously for my own family, that's perfectly fine. And then because that was so successful, this was actually his first possum yarn hat and this one is just using that possum yarn so this one is you can see you can see how drapey that is and it's it's light like a cloud it is so light and warm um, I have I've been told by that the yarn shop that a lot of uh, hikers use this yarn to make uh, undershirts out of because of how light it is how well it breathes and how warm it is and I can see why because it's ridiculously warm it's amazing but this hat ended up being almost half the size again that was required for his head so in any breeze it would just blow off um, and as you can see also even by the ribbing the ribbing just sort of stretches straight out so what I had to do with this one is I steeped it also but I had to stick it twice on on each side and I think I removed almost four inches from this um, and yet this stitch count is the same as so my, my beanies I would normally do either in a 96 uh, sorry if I'm essentially making something up to be about a DK weight about 90 between 96 stitches um, or 104 would be my other one if I want it slightly larger so these are all done with the same number of stitches but that's just that difference in the fabric okay the next things I've been knitting quite a lot of are dishcloths loads and loads of dishcloths so these are all in cotton um, and I've just created a basic just the yarn over border that goes around so knitting on the bias obviously increasing up until you get to about 50 stitches and then decreasing as you go so just simply cotton dishcloths so at the moment I've got some blues some neutrals in the beiges and greys it's a bright orange more greys beiges the like so knitting up a bunch of these just for, for use and for gifts and for maybe selling at markets, all that type of thing. If you haven't used cotton dishcloths before, they're actually fantastic to use and they hold up really well. I also have here my Arboreal by Jennifer Steingas. This particular sweater is lovely. This is all knit in DK weight. Um, and it's incredibly warm having the stranded color work so again that's the stranded there having the stranded color work no, that's the back go across your chest I can't talk highly enough about having a jumper like that in winter it just keeps your entire chest area incredibly warm um, and this is done particularly well I need to actually glean this one as well because I've been getting a lot of use out of it and this is knit in Bendigo Woolen Mills 
and the ferns are actually a grey. It looks a little bit white, but it's actually you know light, very light grey. These are all in my Ravelry page if you want to actually have a look at some of the notes. Whenever I knit something up, I actually keep the notes as I go of any modifications that I make. Um, but this Jennifer Steingas one, I did to the pattern. And what's interesting is I've watched a lot of people talk about their feelings about this collar. And there were actually quite a few people that were changing the collar from the pattern. I absolutely love it. And in fact, I'm going to incorporate this collar. It's just actually a... The collar's in a garter stitch. So it's just a, a simple, I think it was actually three rows. Nope, looks like, yep, three, two. Can't really tell. Um, let's just, for sake of this, say it's three rows. Uh, just garter stitch on the collar. Uh, I thought it would roll, which is what a lot of people keep talking about, um, that they think it will, but it actually doesn't. It just sits perfectly. And this sweater is my... Caitlin Hunter Zweig. So I love it. Uh, this is almost quite almost Christmassy colours as you can see. So instead of just doing this section here all in the one, uh, the green, obviously I did the, the red up here, did the lace work in the green and then did the red down below. Um, this really gets a lot of a lot of wear. Uh, I made a mistake, it's the beauty of hand knitting, it's not actually making mistakes, is it? It's actually now it's a feature. I made the sleeves too short, but again, I'm not really one for, unless it's for someone else, ripping stuff back. I'll just modify as I go and just live with it. So the sleeves were too short, so I actually made much longer ribbed cuffs than I would have expected, but they've actually come out really well. Um, and what I like about that is, when I'm wearing them, if I need that shorter space, I actually just fold them back and they then end up being a bit of a like a three-quarter sleeve instead so my mistake turned into a feature and I just had to repeat it with this particular Zweig pattern I am getting there's a lot of people talking about on the back because of the short row shaping getting a little bit of a like a poofy bump thing pop up here I do get that um, but it doesn't really bother me that much I just sort of stretch it out and it disappears but it does pop up there sometimes so just to show you something I've got cast on the needles at the moment, this is uh, my traveling sock. Um, um, I've always got a sock in my handbag, just for that minor sitting. Now this is actually just in a Bendigo Woolen Mills yarn as well. Um, and these are actually a pair, these are 72 stitches on two and a half needles. Um, uh, sorry, two and a half millimeter, I should say. Um, these are going to be for my husband. Please forgive my nails, I need to redo them. So that's just in a Bendigo Woolen Mills 80-20. Uh, so a, a 80 Merino, 20 nylon. I'll just show you the ball. That's the ball here. Just a lovely sock bag from Random Acts of Whoopsie, just on Etsy. Um, and she was fantastic. Her bags are, are gorgeous. I've actually got about three or four of them. I said, what I love about this one, the fun fact Christmassy, is it can just sort of squish up, there's no issue with it, and it just gets chucked in the handbag. So just to show you some other items that I have finished off uh, this month, but I've actually already moved them along or given them away, so I'm just going to bring them up and show you. Alright, so this particular beanie was a mohair and Bendigo Woolen Mills uh, just a nice pink yarn and it's also a pink mohair so that one's actually gone to a friend of mine and that was again just a basic beanie I've knitted that one only the week before last I think and this particular one is actually my husband's favorite beanie uh, but he's actually misplaced it at the moment we think that one of his friends has actually borrowed that so that's with the beanie on so that's actually just been two strands of four ply or fingering weight yarn held together and then just doing that uh, blending going through so starting off with um, one particular yarn and holding that same yarn for two color changes and then repeating that through so started with in this instance a black and a gray and then I kept the gray and brought in a dark purple so then it was the 
the gray from the black and the dark dark purple and then I dropped the gray and kept the dark purple going with a lighter purple and just keep that blending through so fading those colors through um, I'm actually I've made quite a few beanies in that style and I'm actually going to keep going with that because it's a brilliant way to use up scrap yarn and they just look fantastic as they go through with all of the colors there we go so I'm going to actually knit some some more of these at the moment in some different colors um, and my daughter would also like some of these done with some color work through them I don't know that I want to take the time to do some color work knitting through um, a dog's jumper because Cheddar tends to try and bite at it and that type of thing. Um, the intent of that particular style was just simply to have something that added a little bit of warmth. Uh, the next ones I make, with, with that particular one I didn't do uh, ribbing around her legs just to make it a bit easier because she's only a puppy to get her legs in and out. I think with the future ones I'll do, even if it's just a half inch of ribbing around those legs, just to pull that in a little bit more and give her that little bit uh, tighter fit. Um, and I need to make the collar maybe half an inch bigger as well around that neck space. Um, and she's growing a little bit more length because with her being a miniature dash hound, it's more that length and her belly that she's going to keep on growing. So just making those adjustments for future ones. But that's a really nice fast knit and um, I'm actually hearing a bit about uh, from other people that they'd actually like some of those. So I might knit up four or five of those and see if people actually want them. So that's what I've been knitting on lately. Okay. And finally, I just wanted to talk about, I've got my, so I subscribe to, I subscribe to Pom Pom, um, but I also buy Lane Magazine. So I've got the latest Lane Magazine. I haven't finished looking through it yet. Um, I have, however, taken some scans of some of the pages that I'm interested in having a much closer look at and Lane is one of those magazines that I actually stop and read the articles in because they're just fantastic they really are um, but I am more of a I will read electronically mostly I really wish they produced this as an ebook I'd still happily buy the paper version but because I actually read everything on my iPad mostly at the time um, there's only a couple of things in here that I particularly wanting to knit. One of them is actually this one on the cover. I love the thought of doing that neckline. It has been so long since I've worn a jumper and that the fabric they've created is just so gorgeous and drapey with it. Um, the latest Pom Pom magazine. There's a couple of tops in here that I wouldn't mind actually having a look at for my daughter. Um, for my daughter I need to use some inclusive sizing and I actually think that this particular cardi would look great on her. Oops, I'm just dropping stuff there. So I've actually got that marked so I can have a look at those as they come through. The issue with this is I've obviously as we've, we've all got on, on Ravelry my queue. My queue I think at the moment is sitting at something like 50 or 60 items and I need to go through these I need to go through these and actually add some of these to my queue. But at some stage, I need to actually start knitting my queue or culling my queue back down because it's getting too big. Um, I really, I've even already bought the yarn for it. I really want to knit this. Um, but there's just so much that I need to get on the needles that I'm just not having the time to knit. And then on things, there wasn't anything I wanted to knit in this one. It's not, they're all stunning designs. I've, I've got to admit, the entire book I really love from an artistic standpoint. And I think that all of the garments in this are incredibly artistic. Um, but for me, it was more like, I love watching a fashion show and I love watching the catwalk. Um, I find it really inspiring and I'm blown away by the, the work and creations that the designers can actually come up with. But I don't necessarily want to wear all those garments. That's how I felt about this issue. Love the work. Um, really, really inspiring stuff. But not really garments that I would wear. But it said, still love it. 
This version of Lane, however, I think 80% of it, I actually really want to knit up and hence my issue with my queue because there's just too much that I want to do. I just love even just, this looks like a warm hug. It just looks like it just, it's just a hug. It's just amazing. So I need to try and have a couple, not, this is not going to happen by the way, but I need to have some time without getting these magazines because I need to actually knit up and get on top of some of the stuff. Um, and then I was watching a podcast, I think about three weeks ago, and there was a designer, one sec, come right back. So there's another magazine that I've bought recently is an ebook, and it's called Little Man Knits. So it's uh, young boy wear, so essentially from I think toddler through to preteen, so probably knit up to about a 10 to a 12 boys jumper girls can wear them too obviously it's, it's just that modification by alex capshaw taylor um, i watched a podcast that she was on and had to before the end of that podcast buy that particular ebook it's got 22 grant it says 22 grandpa inspired designs for the little man in your life i think it is but it may not be in your life because that last word isn't there so i'm just assuming that's the rest of the sentence um it was published in December 2018 and it is an amazing book. I've There's about six different types of jumpers in that that I'd actually like to knit up. Um, I'm particularly in love with, I think the first one I do this, it's a hoodie, a little boy's hoodie that's done in some stripes and it's got a nice, almost almost like a pixie type hood and with the front pockets, um, that, that all in one sort of pocket on the front tummy that I really love the look at, look of. So I think I need to knit up some of those as well. But anyway, I'm going to stop the podcast here so I can actually get a new item on my needles. Um, as you can tell, though, I haven't figured out what that's actually going to be quite yet. Um, so who knows? But either way, today's the day for Tour de Fleece that starts. So I'm also going to do some spinning and get some stuff on my needles again. So thank you very much for joining me. Have a lovely afternoon and I'll talk to you later.